if we come across the equation of a hyperbola that's not in standard form, what we have to do is rewrite it in standard form. And in order to do that, we have to complete the square twice and then divide by the constant. And uh, really, that's the exact same thing that we did when we were looking at the ellipse. With the ellipse, I had to complete the square twice and then divide by the constant because it had to be set equal to 1. The only difference here, and the thing that makes it a little bit more difficult, is uh, with the ellipse, we had positive in between, so we were dealing with positive numbers. Here we're going to have a negative in between, which means we're going to be dealing with negative numbers. So there's going to be a couple more places where we can make signers with these. But other than that, it's almost the exact same thing. Okay. So when we look at this first one, in order to go through the process of completing the square, the first thing we do is create space by getting rid of the constant term. So I'm going to move this 75. I'm going to subtract it from each side. So I subtract that 75 from each side. I'm going to reorganize some things, move some things around. So I've got a 9x squared minus 90x with a little space, minus the 16y squared minus 32y with a little bit of space equals a negative 65. Right? And now from here, I can't complete the square the way this is written because in order to complete the square, I have to have a 1 in front of my squared terms. So right here I have a 9, right here I have a negative 16. I can't complete the square with those values written there. So I'm going to factor the 9 out. So I factor the 9 out over here. That gives me an x squared minus 10x with a little space. Right here in this second piece, I'm going to factor out this negative 16, which is going to leave me with a y squared plus 2y with a little bit of space. And now I can complete the square with what's in those parentheses. So here I take the b value, divide it by 2, and square it. Uh, that gives me a plus 25. Here I take this b value, divide it by 2, and square it. That gives me a plus 1. And now whatever I do to one side, I have to do to the other side. And notice here that uh, I added a 25 in this parentheses. So I added a 25 inside here. But what I really added to the whole side, this 9 would get distributed. And therefore, even though it's a 25 on the inside, it's actually a 9 times 25 to the entire side of the equation. So what I really added to that side of the equation was a 225. And that's what I need to add to the other side in order to balance this thing. Right here, I added a 1 inside the parentheses. But what I really added to this entire side would be a 1 times a negative 16. So what I need to add to the other side is a negative 16, or subtract 16. Okay? I added a 1 inside parentheses, but I added a negative 16 to the whole side. And now I do some simplifying here. Uh, if I take a look at this first one, I'm just going to uh, go ahead and uh, factor this thing. This is going to factor into an x minus 5 squared. I do the same thing with the next piece. I leave that minus 16 out front. This is going to factor into a y plus 1 squared. Uh, and then over here, I just have to simply combine these. And when I do that, it looks like it gives me a 144. And now I need a 1 over on this side. So I'm going to divide each side by that 144. And now I divide each piece. I'm using my distributive property. When I do the uh, 9 divided by the 144, I reduce that. And when I reduce that, uh, let's see what that's going to give me here. Uh, it gives me an x minus 5 squared over 16. Here, the 16 over the uh, 144 is going to reduce to a y plus 1 squared over 9. And it's all equal to 1. And that's it. This thing is now in standard form. So I complete the square twice. Whatever ready to one side, I have to do the other side. And then I divide by that constant term. All right? And just be very, very aware and very, very careful with your signs here. If I do the same thing with the next one, again, I start off by creating space. So I'm going to add this 9 to each side. And then I do a little bit of organizing. That's a negative 25x squared uh, minus 150x with a little space plus the 4y squared plus 16y with a little bit of space equals the 309. And now again, from here, I can't complete the square with this negative 25 here. I can't complete it with this positive 4 here. I need to factor out each of those values. So here I'm going to factor out the negative 25. That's going to leave me with an x squared um, plus 6x. Again, be careful with your, your signs there. 
Here I have to factor out the 4. That's going to leave me with a y squared plus 4y equals the 309. And now I complete the square. b divided by 2 and square it gives me a 9 here. Here b divided by 2 and square it gives me a 4 here. Whatever I do to one side, I have to do the other side. Again, it's a 9 in parentheses, but it's a 9 times a negative 25, which is going to give me a negative 225. The second trinomial, that's a 4 in parentheses, but it's a 4 times 4 to that entire side. So I had a 16. And now it's just time to simplify this a little bit. That's 25, negative 25 x plus 3 squared. This is a y plus 2 squared equals over here. I just need to simplify this thing. Uh, it looks like it gives me a 100. And now I divide each side by the 100, because I need a 1 over on this side. I reduce each of these fractions. This one's going to give me a negative x plus 3 squared over 4. Uh, this one is going to reduce and give me a y plus 2 squared over 25. And it's all equal to 1. But now this doesn't look quite right. Remember, the minus sign is supposed to be in the middle. I essentially have to take these two fractions, and they just need to trade places, okay, for this thing to be in the proper format. So this is going to be a y plus 2 squared over 25. Put the positive fraction first minus the x plus 3 squared over 4 equals 1. And now that is in standard form.